Thank you both for doing this. It's a pleasure to have you both me. on. Uh, hold on. Okay. I've got Damn. Steve Jobs looking over my shoulder. It's really weird in the video. That is weird. <laughs> or Ashley Kutcher, I guess. Oh, you have a poster from that movie? Weird. That is weird. Yeah, it's. Uh, I don't know if you can see it there, but I got it from a a, bu a Canadian buddy. Oh yeah, there it is. I've also got an Apple clock right next to it, which is the original Apple Watch. I would like to say. Yeah, you're <laughs> and you got wrestler wrist, so it fits. Um, okay, I think we're ready to go. Uh, let's kick it off and go for it. End our Friday on the on the proper note here. Um, I'll start with a little intro and off we go. Begins in three, two, one. I have it. current gate. Current gate. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Current Geek. This is Current Geek, episode 59, the weekly proceedings of the meetings of the Frog Pants All Stars, geeks of the world, and you to keep you current on all things that matter most. I'm Scott Johnson. He's Tom Merritt. Hi, I'm Tom Merritt, and this is Current Greek, where we discuss the proposal for the Greek debt restructuring and Germany's opposition to it. How come my uh, ATM won't give me any cash, won't give me any euro dollars well, anymore? Well, yeah, they, you can't get any euros from your Athenas Bank yeah. uh, ATM, and we'll talk all about that with our guest today. <laughs> Will there be a Grexit? Find out. Oh, is that what they're calling it, a Grexit? Because yeah. I really don't like that. That's a terrible, terrible You don't like name. that one? No. I, I've been using that for a long time. All right. Well, years old. Good job. Uh, hey, we have guests. We always have guests here on our Friday edition of, uh, of Current Geek. It's the only edition. There is no other day edition. <laughs> our guest today, let's start with the returning guest, Mr. Justin Robert Young. You know him. You love him. Justin, hi. Oh, hi, everybody. How are, how are you doing? Doing great. I see your beard is in full bloom. I can't wait to see it in a couple of weeks from now. I'll... Uh, yeah, fuzzy are you guys doing current geek at at Nertacular? We are indeed. Yep. If you're not otherwise tied up, we may have you uh, come up and bug us during that time. So we'll feel see. Like what are we doing it? Is it on I, I feel like there's literally uh, going to be like no time uh, to do anything but be on stage at at Nertacular, <laughs> and I'm so happy. You have no idea how happy it makes. I me. know you like that, so it's it's going to be that kind of thing for for roughly two and a half days, and I'm very excited to see you guys there. Of course, uh, our other guest is also coming. He was there last year. He's coming again. I don't want to say former pro wrestler because I feel like that's sad to say because I really really liked when he was like full bloom wrestler. It's Joey Image on the phone. Hi, Joey. Good morning, sir. Uh, good afternoon, sir. How are you? You see, you had your last match. You doing all right? You holding up? Uh, I did, yeah. I actually, this is the fourth podcast, or sorry, third podcast I've done uh, this week, third night in a row, yeah. talking about it. So it's been super emotional. Yeah. Uh, ever since that night, uh, Jerry can tell you about it. But um, yeah, it was super emotional. I'm doing all right. I'm. Uh, I, I'm. I'm not going to call myself former either. I'm still a wrestler. I. I you know, I'm. I've been around 15 years. I was trained. I'm still in the business. So. I'm just not uh, physically in ring, be getting beat up, so I'm still around. So you can pick up a chair anytime and throw it at a dude, right? It's not a problem. <laughs> Correct. Or I can just <laughs> throw the dude. Well, it's good to have you here. It's good to have Justin here. Let's do a show, and let's start with the top stuff. Herbert Hoover, Secretary of Commerce in 1922, finds infant radio facilitates news gathering, as do many others in high public office. Tom, break it down. So uh, San Diego Comic-Con is a little convention where people get together and trade comics and uh, sometimes movie announcements happen there because, because you know, people read comics like movies. And uh, I was talking before the show. I was going to ask people, like, what are the trailers that you've enjoyed that you've seen come out this week? And then Joey Image came with, uh, in the course of our conversation, a little heat toward the new Ghostbusters. Uh, Star Fury Zeta on our subreddit, currentgeek.reddit.com, pointed out a photo of the new Ghostbusters in uniform linked on uh, NeoGAF. Uh, everybody's talking about how Kate McKinnon looks like the cartoon version of Egon in there. But Joey, you, you, uh, what, what is your feeling on the new Ghostbusters? Uh, it's, it hurts my childhood. <laughs> first, first of all, one thing that annoys me is if you go to the IMDb page for it, it says the plot is as of yet unknown. It, it was, the plot is in the title. Okay, mm. you don't. It doesn't need to be unknown. So they're going to be they're going to be busting ghosts. And from what I can tell from that photo, I'm guess, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, from what I, I can would tell imagine from, it will make them feel good. <laughs> it might <laughs> the busting. The uh, imagine, well, the, they ain't afraid of no ghosts. The photo I, yeah. makes it look like so. I, I could be wrong here, but it looks like Melissa McCarthy is the Ray character. Um, I'm guessing uh, what's her name's Peter. Uh, we all know who's playing. Uh, what's his name? <laughs> 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 
<laughs> yeah, so it, I, it does. I That's mean, I, I am basing this purely on a quick viewing of that photo, but it does does appear that they're kind of going for that. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm hearing this a lot. Like, they're taking my childhood or they're ruining my childhood or they're taking this thing that I loved and, and redoing it. And I don't know. I, I'm more of the camp that says, well, let's see That's how it dumb. goes. That that's that's a dumb it's a dumb thing to say and think, Joey. Because no, no, no. how does it affect the original thing? You want to know what ruined your childhood? <laughs> Ghostbusters two. That's what ruined your childhood. And, and, and Godfather three, but that's another story for another day. Sure, sure. But but it's look, Justin. It's, it's, but Justin makes a p- good point. The thing, the original thing stays. The, I want I want this to feel like a wrestling match. By the way, this is why this is why this is good. Disagreement is good on this on this podcast. But I want. Why can't it be that the original Ghostbusters was good? Two was kind of garbage. Uh, we've waited forever for a third one. It never happened with the original cast. Here's a new idea. Here's a fresh take. A whole new generation can enjoy this in a possibly a new way. It. I don't see how it's an affront to me or you. To, well, to put this in terms that that jury would understand. Uh, you, yourself and Tom, I'm not sure, but I know jury would understand this. Nobody wanted to see the second Undertaker. They brought him in. It was awful. They killed him off. He came back as Brian Lee, and that's it. Well, it the may, original it, should be the only one. It could be awful. See, this is I want to see Ernie Hudson. I don't want to see this. Uh, well, but, but here's the thing. Or whatever the hell she is. Yeah. If and and, and it's funny that, to that. to compare like you know that you know to to use that that wrestling analogy right in that like the Undertaker is is a dude, right? But yet Bill Murray is not his character in Ghostbusters. And and neither is Dan Aykroyd. Simply that. They've done a million different things. The Ghostbusters lore can be something else. And they're they're not going to be... I mean, like, would it be better for you if it were a bunch of dudes and they were playing those roles? I think it's it's actually... Now that it's a wider universal spectrum where there's these other people that are going to be in this universe where ghosts exist and they are indeed busted I think it would be busters then then that's red I, I think it would be funnier if they were playing like Bill Murray playing that role not playing just the character oh yeah so wait you want like <laughs> these characters you want these people doing impressions of Bill Murray that's and exactly Dan being like fake razor and diesel though that's like that's, well, nobody wanted them either no but that's the thing it's like so you're saying you want them to exactly be those characters as opposed to different characters that also live in that world because I feel like that would be more true to the original and I think I feel like the original is the only one that should stand wow all right and, but, and, Although and they re- Hollywood's remade 4,000 and, you know, every single movie that was successful back when I was 10 or 12 or 15 or whatever. So this doesn't come as a surprise that it's being done. I just, I don't know, maybe I hate women. That's not true. But <laughs> I, I was making an excuse for someone. I don't know. I was making the argument before somebody else did. No, I think this, you know what? You know what? Hold on. Joey makes a good point. Now, I think it's important to bring it up here. There is um, there is a bit of fear put into people. There, there are some people I know. I won't give names because I'm part of the problem. But they're afraid to say they don't like the new Ghostbusters because they don't want to be perceived as somebody who's upset about the fact that it's women, that their bigger issue is that it's a movie they loved as a child is being remade. And I think that's a little weird, too, that people are feeling this weird pressure to accept it based purely on uh, the standards of which, of, you know, that we're all celebrating these days, that women are able to play these roles. Well, and we should be excited about it. Yeah, the, the, the woman thing I brought up is, is just a joke, but it's, it's really the fact that that was something I loved when I was a kid. And I feel like now, like, kids these days, teenagers or whatever, these days are going to see that and think that that's the original movie and the entire legacy is going to have been shat on. But isn't that okay, though? Like, if they, if it's their oh, own no. movie and they're cool with they it? Need to see Bill, they need Ernie Hudson. They don't need this woman. <laughs> Uh, no, this I, I don't want to see on, Leslie, Leslie Jones is, is. We always do this when something we grew up with comes back after a long absence. And 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 I'm I'm trying to think of good examples, but there are definitely examples. The Twilight Zone came back in the '80s. A lot of kids liked it, and old people were like, "Ah, it's nothing like the original." Uh, yep. There, there, there's always that feeling that it can never be as good. And I would say sometimes it won't be. Sometimes it will be. Jury's still out for me on this one. I like all of these actors a lot. I you think know, I, I will still see jury's, it. Dude, jury's uh, in. <laughs> Jury says that every. Uh, every uh, 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 Paul Feig directed and written movie starring a lot of these same actors is really good. Spy, I haven't seen it yet, but is apparently really good. Uh, Bridesmaids was really good. Uh, you know, th- he works well with them. This is a ripe franchise for it. And the fact of the matter is that everybody in this movie wants to be doing this movie on a level that the original cast 
didn't want to do Ghostbusters 2 and so didn't want to do Ghostbusters 3 that it never really happened. I think what we're going to get is a very passionate, awesome version of a Ghostbusters movie. Uh, and and I'm, I'm, I'm super pumped about it. And in terms of things coming back, the, the, the uh, Jurassic World, by the end of its run, might be either the third or the second uh, highest grossing movie of all time by the time it's done uh, in, its, in its run. Like, people want to see it, and I'm one of them. Yeah, because because I'm a movie lover, I'll definitely at least give this one chance. But uh, I'm not a big Melissa McCarthy fan to begin with, so it's already got a negative. <laughs> I loved Identity Theft. I'm just not a big fan of hers. Well, and see, there you go. That's a, that's a taste issue, right? And if all of a sudden you're you're off to a, a false start, if you're like, well, one of these people I know is yeah, not. I'm Correct. I'm already coming into it with a defeatist attitude. I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and that makes sense to me. <laughs> well, and you're honest about it, and I like that. I, I admire that. But I do, I do. My, my vision is a bit skewed at times. We also don't know how much of a quote unquote remake this is. Um, it does seem to be one, uh, as opposed to, say, you know, a new Star Wars movie isn't the same as remaking A New Hope or something. Uh, to, um, to Melissa McCarthy's credit, I'm sure she's not a big Joey Image fan. Oh, you know, so she's we'll dude, that. wrestling in general. She hates it. Anyway. It's good. Has she said that? Yeah, no, I'm kidding. Oh man! <laughs> not trying to stoke your fire any further. I was than we I'm, need to. I'm about to Google like her interview. She <laughs> talked about that randomly. All right. Well, let's let's move to a less controversial topic. Reddit. Coder <laughs> JMC submitted the details uh, that last week Reddit let go Victoria Taylor. She's the admin who worked closely with the mods of the Ask Me Anything forum. The forum shut down while they decided what they were going to do because it was a surprise to them. And then a lot of other subreddits started to shut down and go basically go private. Uh, in protest. Then they asked me anything. The IAMA uh, subreddit came back and they said that they had decided not to take any offered admin support, but instead uh, just try to go on their own independently with their subreddit. Then co-founder Alexis Ohanian and interim CEO Ellen Powell apologized for all the confusion. And today, mere hours before we started recording the show, uh, Ellen Powell, the interim CEO, resigned and they have named co-founder Steve Huffman as a uh, CEO, as the CEO for now. Didn't I hear some talk that um, Kevin Rose was going back to to uh, dig again or something? I don't know. I'm not I, saying yeah, this I've has not anything. Heard that. Did I, you hear that? Is that true? I saw some Instagram photo I know of him he's saying going to New York. He said it's uh, good to, to be start home. A venture thing, but I have heard nothing about. Yeah, Kevin no, Rose he's going doing back. watches now, Rose. Right. All right. I don't know. He if yeah, there was yeah. some there was something where he was back at the dig offices and he put something on Instagram saying it's good to be home. Uh, cool new ideas happening. Something something something. So that is a lot different than <laughs> Kevin Rose announcing he is going back to be CEO of Dig. <laughs> That right. is, Kevin Rose dropped by and said, ah, oh, this is the thing I started. It's cool to see it I'm now. just kicking a little yeah. dirt on on the uh, already dirty. That's just called lying, not kicking dirt. <laughs> oh, yeah, is that what that is? Like, All right. That's just really confusing or, lying. Sure, I guess so. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, Reddit. Uh, it's a little chaos over there. What are you going to do? It's its own country, basically. I, you know, I feel like every time we hear about something crazy happening on Reddit, to me it's just another social experiment they can study 10 years from now and and i i feel like i have zero control over it or any kind of anything with it so any anyone else have thoughts on the whole reddit kerfuffle i do all right I, it seems like there are very two distinct issues with the reddit uh thing that people seem to be conflating into one and specifically as it results to ellen pow and the leadership at reddit before her and and as we will see after her number one you have the discussion about the civility of dialogue in Reddit and Reddit's own conscience in understanding where they want to draw the line of what should be allowed and what shouldn't be allowed in their private little discussion hall. Uh, that is something that Ellen Powell very much put her name on. That is something that I think could be fairly attributed. She would consider to be fairly attributed to her legacy on what they've enforced in terms of their terms of service on what they aren't and uh, aren't and are going to allow. And then there is a space and a separate issue about how crappy Reddit from the home office has been to their moderators, this coming from the moderators, and by Reddit's own admission as they have dealt with the fallout of this particular thing. The, the, the Victoria uh, Taylor firing seems to be, by any and all account, public accounts, a straw that broke the camel's back uh, of a lot of moderators saying, hey, listen, she wasn't just somebody that helped with AMAs. She was very often the only person with an at reddit.com mailing address that would get back to us when we needed things to happen. So to sever that lifeline, especially as coldly as they did, 
felt like a betrayal. And I feel like we're, we're seeing the syner the synergy of these two issues when they don't necessarily have anything to do with each other because a lot of that dysfunction by any account seems to have been there before the uh before Alan Powell came in as interim CEO. Well the the letting go of Victoria Taylor uh we don't know anything about that, do we? I mean she may have I heard something about her breaking her silence or some link here. I don't know if any of this is credible but and what she's been saying about it but when she was let go I I have to think it's more complicated than ah, they let her go cuz she's good with us. I I don't think it works that way. There's more to it and I don't know what that was. But that's part of the problem here. And I agree with you. The two probably aren't tied together very well uh, or much at all. But because one seems to have led to the other, this to me, this is just like weird hyperbole. Um, I don't know why she was let go. Maybe she was terrible there. I don't know. She seems very nice, but I don't know well, anything about her. There's, there's a lot of rumors that are floating around uh, on, on whether and I, they're trying to relocate uh, headquarters effectively from New York to San Francisco. And, and that apparently is rumored to be an issue on, uh, you know, her, she didn't want to move and yada, yada, yada. And then they wanted to revamp or offer new kinds of AMAs that she wasn't comfortable doing. So who knows? I mean, th that's all complete hearsay and, and conjecture. The only reason why the censorship quote unquote fight and the Reddit isn't great with moderators uh, fight converged is because people were mad at Ellen Powell for for leading the the uh, the the civility fight, and Ellen Powell is the CEO when another big, uh, long-standing problem came to a head. That's the only nexus point. Is that she's the CEO as both of these things happened. One she had direct control over. The other was a problem that happened before her. And you can fault her for maybe not being great at making it better, but it existed before her. And I'm going to take a wild guess and say it's going to exist after she's gone. So are, can I, will I still, who cares about all this? All we care about is can I still get my elbow fetish videos at Reddit? Like, does this affect yeah, anything? I have to go to vote for that, V-O-A-T dot com. That's where all the really, uh, the people who feel like the new policies are excluding them have gone to have a, what they consider a more open uh, forum. And it's basically Reddit code uh, just re-implemented. What does it spell? How do you spell it again? V-O-A-T. V-O-A-T. Like a goat, but you're voting. But go, yeah. dot vote, com? Go. Oh, interesting. This domain yeah. may be for sale, it says. Weird. All right. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> basically it's, uh, you know, uh, one of the biggest forums there is one that, that transplanted from Reddit, which is fat people hate. Oh, so good. So you post pictures of fat people and you it's make... It's vote.co, uh, by the way, V-O-A-T oh. dot C-O, not C-O-M. Sorry. Got it. Sorry, no problem. I think I said it wrong. Yeah, that explains that's why, why you that's got for, for sale. sale thing. Uh, that's interesting. I didn't know that that's where the uh, the gross Reddit pages were going. Because that's not a very nice. Well, I mean, it, well, it, I wouldn't characterize it that way. Some gross pages will probably go there. Other pages that just feel like, hey, you know what? We want to talk about controversial things, uh, and that doesn't seem to be allowed because we want to talk about this controversial thing. Are also going interesting. And some people are going there because they just don't like the idea that Reddit has changed. Yeah, like Dig and like everything else before it. I do. I, well, I guess but I'm, that, but I'm, that's I'm, what makes it. That's what makes it uh, 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 more ominous, right? Yeah. Is because Reddit was a site that was not to say languishing, but certainly seemed to have kind of peaked in the shadow of Dig. And then Dig kind of self immolated and Reddit became really big. Yeah. So it's like there's the, 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 what, what is what, you know, right now you look at the narrative that has happened before and you say, wait a minute, is this bound to happen again you know in the same way that we've been waiting for 10 years to find out w what is going to be the facebook or the the facebook to facebook as facebook was to myspace mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. like you know the, the next thing that swallows up the old thing well if honestly it feels like starbucks should be telling me all this has happened before and all of this will happen again because it does feel like that cycle and i don't think it's over yet like i think the reason that people are so disappointed and so upset and there's some people that are upset because something changed and they never like that right but there are people like the ask me anything uh subreddit folks who really aren't just throwing a fit because things changed they're saying we've really been patient we've really been trying we had a great admin relationship and you let her go without saying a thing to us and we feel this is a pattern of behavior where we the people who just donate our time the folks who do the ima subreddit are lawyers right these are not just you know 
kids. I am a lawyer. <laughs> right. They are they are full. To, well, the, no, I'm just saying they're full time employed people who enjoy yeah. doing this. They are not irresponsible. Allegedly. They're not script kiddies. Yeah. Uh, and they're saying, look, you know what? We're mature people. We want to have a dialogue. And you guys just haven't reached out to us. So we're not going to quit. We're not going to get mad and take our tools and go home. But we are going to, you know, let you know what we think. And we are going to change the way we, we moderate this. And we're really disappointed with it. And I thought the way they handled their part of this was very well done because it pointed what was a problem but didn't take the opportunity to just have a mad rage fit. How long is one final question? How long has Vote existed? I'm just curious. Has it did Not it crop? Not very long. Okay. Vote.co again. Or Vote.co. Uh, sorry. Well, it was it's a no, it was Woverse or something, and then it rebranded as Vote. Uh, so yeah. this didn't spring up in the last three days, is what I'm getting at. Like suddenly. No, it, no it, but a lot of people have moved to it in the last few days. Okay. Yeah. Does, that, does Vote stand for something? V O A T? Is that an anagram? It stands for we couldn't get V O T E, but we could get this <laughs> URL. Okay. We couldn't get .com, so we took off the M. Yeah, no, I, I think it's like dig with two G's or any, you know, flicker with an R. It's what's hip now. Sure. Yeah. It, 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 and it left many saying F word, vote is down because uh, it was the, the, the surge in traffic was, uh, was crippling to them. Well, there you go. What did we learn today? Well, you learned that uh, you get <laughs> as much out of your community as you put into it. All and right. Some communities are good and some are bad. And when you're Reddit and you have a history of treating people really well, but you also have a really huge community, it just gets harder the longer you go. Yeah. Well, uh, why, a very wise podcaster once told me that you get the chat room you deserve. I don't remember his name, but he was a nice fellow from Illinois. And uh, All right, Pete. And that really stuck with me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it, it's got one one uh, little coda on this. I, I, I disagree that this is the end of Reddit uh, for this reason. We old timers who settled uh, this this uh, far flung western frontier uh, with log cabins uh, tend to think of these things as more fluid because we have seen in the early days things rise and then fall very, very fast. Once you get the kind of critical mass in numbers that Reddit has, uh, I, I think it's hard for all of that to just go away. And yeah. you even saw that with the protests that, you know, only X amount of people. And it was about as large as it could get, considering the independent minded element of a Reddit moderator community. Uh, and still, there was a bunch of Reddits, including ones that I know probably me and Joey frequent, like our squared circle, the the professional wrestling Reddits. Yes, uh, that was like. You know, hey, uh, all power to her. Uh, she never really helped us with our AMAs, but uh, we're going to keep it open because who cares what these jabroni marks are doing? <laughs> <laughs> Consider that, that Dig yeah. is still in business. Yeah. Consider that Lycos is still a search engine before yeah. you say Reddit is done. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good point. And uh, Dig is actually, some people really quite like the current state of Dig. So, yeah, you're, you're right. Some I mean, people it, dig it. Yeah. See? <laughs> Nice Let's talk about fighting robots. Captain Kipper let us know about an upcoming battle between two giant robots. And this is not a movie out of Comic-Con. This is not fiction at all. U.S.-based Megabots, Inc. has challenged Japan's Suidabashi heavy industry to a robot fight. Both giant robots are equipped with weapons, but Suidabashi accepted on the condition that they eschew their weapons and fight hand-to-hand -hand or, or robot hand to robot hand fight will now be arranged to take place sometime in a year and uh they'll have to figure out logistics and how to make sure the pilots of the robots don't die so these aren't robots with are these robots with dudes in them or are they remote They're, controlled yes they are they are mechs with dudes in them they're not properly robots i suppose okay. Ouch, that them? sounds dangerous yeah it does right but think of i want to be in one of them dude Th this I mean, is one, no not one of them dudes in one of them robots. Whoa. <laughs> you be in the back. sorry you almost went somewhere so this is a there. good this is a good point That's another subreddit the future yeah that's <laughs> way deep down um here's a, here's a good question for you joey as a as a dude who's donned the the pro wrestling uh business uh maybe the future of our both real <laughs> I don't want to say real, but both our entertainment based fighting in a ring or our actual boxing slash, you know, uh, ultimate fighter stuff, UFC stuff. Maybe one day we quit doing this to each other and instead do it to each other with a <laughs> thick layer robots. of robots with like lots of protective gear and stuff. I would appreciate being a part of that business. Yeah. Well, what do you much. think, though? Do you think if, it's a viable idea? I'm not into idea? the no weapons thing, though. I mean, I, I assume the machine itself is a weapon, but 
I mean, how much fun could that be? Put them in a cage and give them little robotic chairs and okay. rope arms and everything. But, but do you but, use weapons when you wrestle? I have, yes. Of course. Oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Can I can I ask a, a question? Yeah. This is going to be the most. This is the most exciting. This idea will ever be, <laughs> as we all think in our heads what the most awesome robot fight will ever be. And Joey, you can speak to this. You work the the art of professional wrestling is making a fight as exciting as possible, and there is a science and art to it, the likes of which will not happen when two big lumbering. Uh, uh, copy machines tap each other two times and one falls over. <laughs> well, wait, hold on. But just to they've get, got a whole year to build it, though. So just to be no, they're already built. They have a year to like. No, no, I don't mean make. physically built them. That's what I mean. Build up the. Uh, build up the hype. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Megabots Mark II is twelve thousand pounds and five meters high. Sudibash's Kuratas is nine thousand pounds and four meters high, and has Gatling guns. Whoa. Oh my god! Good lord! There's guys in those things. That's there's crazy. one guy in the Sudibashi, and the Megabots has a two, is a two pilot affair with a gunner and a navigator. A yeah. minigun. Holy! No, none of us should be shocked. It's Japan who's doing this. Uh, first that, of all, that's a t- excellent point. Yeah. Second of all, um, you know, giant robots fighting. I think is the future of, of of well, I don't think for sure, but I would. I kind of hope it's the future of warfare. I just feel like the more robots we put between each other, the more the the the, the less we're all getting hurt. And the hopefully people in the middle are getting hurt. I suppose it depends on where the war is happening. Um, but it's one step closer to a world where we fight it out with technology in this way. And I, I don't think that's such a terrible thing. But, yeah, this will this is uh, – Justin's right. It can't get – I mean, what else is it going to what, – what's the next step after this? Well, once we've seen – I'm, I'm assuming when this – if and when this actually happens, once you've seen one fight, you've probably seen them all. Right. That's kind of my point. Like, you've – I mean, it just it's going to be – I mean – it, when they're that big and they're probably pretty slow and they can't use weapons, oh, yeah, 9, like, like that's what would be exciting is if one of them could get into a shield and the other one would fire a, a Gatling gun at it and see if it could pierce its shield well, and we it, see whether or not it survives. But it, like, could be, it could be like BattleBots where every every week, I mean, let's just pretend it's a TV show. This every, is what I had in mind, right? Yeah, every every week you're, you've got teams of technicians trying to build a better exosuit and putting your guy in it and having him go out and fight it out in the ring kind of battle bot style that's a that's a proven thing where people get into that competition that shows even back now but let let me let me ask the expert joey two gigantic robots but let's book book the match how how do you how do you sell and 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 what is what what, what's the match here that's the problem you can't uh, unless you can get messages back and forth to the people manning these machines to like Hey, this needs to happen. This needs to happen. If if there's a referee that can, uh, I'm, I'm trying to not give away what I do, but whatever, it's already out there. But uh, unless there's somebody in there saying, "Hey, this needs to happen. This needs to happen. You got five minutes left," or yeah. whatever, you know, the camera's on this side, dummy, turn around. It's how do you set up that guy? It's 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 almost like, uh, I mean, it would, it would almost be to me uh, as if they weren't even in the machine. They were just doing it with, uh. Um, you know, remote controls would be well, much don't, easier. Don't, don't think about how it would be done. Just think of consumer side. Assume that 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 there's a way that we could, you can figure out everything and you can get it exactly where you want it. I'm just I, I buy a ticket to whatever junkyard they put this in. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, and I see the best robot fight of my life. Explain to me the 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 the, the best elements, the high spots of that match. Oh God, pulling the head off and and. <laughs> Throwing live live cable and live wires into the crowd, uh, picking up other. If it, uh, I like the junkyard idea, you've already got me sold on that. Just that word junkyard sells me. Uh, I I'd have mine picking up other cars and hitting them with that. See, that's great because you'd have you'd have loosely fitted like chess pieces and things you could tear off and huck into the audience, things like that. Right. Hopefully nothing <laughs> yeah. nothing too sharp or whatever. Well, there but. we go. So that's that's the thing you announced. No weapons uh, uh, attached to the to the to the robot but you never said no weapons right outside that people uh oh here we go you have an ec uh, the old ecw chair spot but people are throwing radiators Carts and, and, uh, yeah, and car hoods and stuff oh that'd be great <laughs> i'd like to see this in a steel cage all right well and remember this is the first you know i think uh, you got to save some some items for the second so 
build well, it up. Yeah, not and, and that's the thing. Everything. It, it will be as exciting as you know those those old uh, you know if you go uh, back and watch like the black and white uh, you know or just George Frank Gotch pro wrestling matches. You know, <laughs> just yeah. two two dudes rubbing their bellies on each other. <laughs> ah, there. speaking of two dudes rubbing their bellies on each other. I bet they're excited about this next story. Yeah. Megazoo's Thor pointed out the man who discovered a Nintendo PlayStation in his attic. Actually, yes. it was in his dad's attic. The console was one of 200 prototypes developed in a brief collaboration between Sony and Nintendo, so it's real. Dan Diebold's dad, Terry, got the machine when he was assigned to clean out the office of former Sony Interactive Entertainment president Olaf Olofsson, who had worked at Advanta Corporation, which went bankrupt in 2009. They went bankrupt. Diebold came in to clean things out, found the console, brought it home. Uh, it doesn't work because they don't have a power adapter for it, but it does have a mystery cartridge and a CD. Uh, these were all supposed to have been destroyed, Scott. So last we talked about this, we theorized that somebody would would slap together a uh, kind of reverse engineer a power adapter to make it work and not blow it out. And I, I think did that's still... Did you talk still, about it on Morningstream? We did. Oh, maybe... I thought it was with you on... I guess yeah, it wasn't was on Wednesday. Us. We haven't so, had a show in two weeks. It probably was on TMS. Well, I was thinking like TMS with you, but anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, they could cobble that together and see if it'll turn on. Part of me thinks it's cool that we don't know uh, still because this thing is like one of the last sort of bastions of, of video game mysteries. Like the, the first big one was whether or not all those ET cartridges were buried in the <laughs> the desert in uh, New Mexico and they turned out they were. So then there was this one and now this one has been proven to have an existing prototype. They were all order destroyed, uh, all 200 of them. But 200 one, of them yeah, yeah, one remained or at least one. There's probably more out there. We just don't know about it. But yeah, yeah there it is, man. This weird collaboration that, that Nintendo, by all accounts, really screwed the deal on because they went, they stood up at CES and said, we have this, we have this arrangement. And then later, without telling Sony, and we're also doing it with Philips. And then Sony got pissed <laughs> and pulled out. And then the rest is history. And in a lot of ways, uh, that decision and that process and that collaboration, failed collaboration, defined the next 15 years of video games, uh, console games anyway. So crazy stuff, man. Who was this worse for in in the long run that they did not? Not. Sony not or Nintendo? Uh, not Sony. I'm not sure. I think, I think it's worse for Nintendo. Yeah, I agree with Joey. It's worse for Nintendo. Uh, or at least it's, I don't know, man. Not Nin that, well, not that Nintendo is or was doing terribly, but as far as this situation, I think Sony came out on top. Well, on the, in the at the time, Sony or Nintendo was killing it. The Super Nintendo was a bona fide hit. It was huge. Right. It was the big console to buy. Genesis was lagging behind, and the, and then this next generation rolls around, and Nintendo got their crap handed to them. The N sixty four had its moments, but the PlayStation one oh, yeah. just destroyed them, and the two continued the trend. And outside of the weird fluky Wii period, the early part of the Wii's lifespan. Sony just dominated them, and then it's just yeah. been a wrestling match between, no pun intended, between them and Microsoft. So I think that Nintendo got hurt by it, but I say that with reservation because I don't think Nintendo really cares that much. They they have such a weird, different way of approaching things, which is even evident in them screwing the deal over in the first place. All right, wait, so hold on, wait. This was... At what point for both companies... Was it uh, so? So 1991. Super, so the Super yeah. NES was out. Yeah, and this was a this was, was basically no PlayStation One yet. Yeah, and this right. was basically this was, a, a a Super NES with a with a CD drive built into it. So it so took this cartridges. would have been it would have replaced the N64 mm -hmm. and and the PlayStation One. Yeah. The PlayStation One is what Sony awesome. went ahead and did after they pulled out of right when this yeah. failed. Yeah, I wouldn't. I this would have been a joining of their houses. Right at at that point. Well, think of it this way, because Sony wasn't in the video game business at all, so this wasn't even a joining of the houses. This was them in Nintendo's eyes. This is them farming out who's making the optical drive. That's this really is like it. the HP iPod. Yeah, very good. Gotcha. Which I still don't understand. Yeah, that's a st <laughs> it's still a mystery. And in fact, it? if if you want not to get political, but if you want a a a point at uh, you know the the uh, questionable. Uh, you know, leadership tactics of uh, Carly Fiorina. Uh, that is certainly one of them. That like <laughs> Apple was so hot, they decided to say, "Yeah, we're making something as part of an iPod." <laughs> Buy it? <laughs> Question mark. Really weird. 
It was showed up at Costco, but anyway. I remember this console when it was first in the news, and I remember how crushed I was when I heard it. Nothing was going to happen. Yeah. And I ended up getting the 64, which I still have, and hooked up and working. I love it. And I ended up getting the PS1, 2, 3, and 4, but um, I love this story just because I remember that, and, and I... I thought it was so cool that this was found well and also remember that this wasn't going to be a new console per se this was more like a sega cd uh right. to the to the genesis and in fact it was kind of their answer to that like how do we get optical in here because cd was the big rage and it would have been an interim sort of late stage solution not necessarily it wouldn't have changed where things were headed probably but certainly no. what sony had in mind for what they ended up doing it literally changed the face of console but games forever. I, I still think that even even though this didn't happen, I think if it had, I don't think it would have been all that groundbreaking because the CPU and the processor and the Super NES wasn't all that fast to begin with. So, I don't know. I mean, that's kind of getting on the technical end of it. But uh, I always thought it would be a cool concept and I would have liked it. I, I would I would still like to see, uh, or I wish I would know where the um, industry would have gone had that, you know, had that happened and, and possibly PlayStation 1 never come about. Sure. Different landscape. Mag Magoo JC pointed out that the Wand Company has created a replica of Star Trek's original communicator that works as a Bluetooth handset for your phone, made of aluminum with a magnetic stand for wireless charging, works as a speaker as well. You can't make calls on it, but you can answer calls with it, and you can pre-order it from StarTrek.com for 150 bucks for shipping in January. I would have wanted this when I had a Nokia chocolate bar phone. Now I don't care. <laughs> You know, like we're doing things with phones that that because the whole point of this would be like, ah, oh, isn't it cool? Basically, cell phones are kind of like communicators. Wish we had that extra functionality, and now we have way beyond that functionality, and now we just don't care anymore. Okay, but <laughs> let me let me posit this for you. All right, we are in a world now where two things are becoming more in vogue. Uh, we are thinking that hardware is an acceptable solution because it is cheaper and cheaper for more and more minuscule tasks, which is the whole point of like wearables, be it the Apple Watch or the Fitbit or uh, the, the the Pebble Time or anything like that. Now, small things like notifications or track how much I move is worth us getting a hardware solution for. And with stuff like Slack, you know, the idea of private communities that have a more robust way to communicate with each other uh, is in the public consciousness. So I don't think this will be cool. But what if all of us frog pants folks all had some little fun hardware device that gave us an interesting, cool way to, to communicate with each other that was separate from the phone? Is that something that we might be interested in if it, you know, benefited us like, is there something i guess i i don't know if this is it in fact no i know this is not it people who are star trek fans will buy it and that'll be it yeah uh but I, i'm not convinced that there won't at some point be some kind of small hardware that just does private communications amongst our friends like a long like a range time. long range broadband based walkie talkie really is what you're talking about Maybe. I mean, and maybe it's not voice, right? Because mm -hmm. voice is problematic. Like, you don't want to be sitting in a business meeting and all of a sudden have, uh, <laughs> you know, somebody start barking, you know, into the into the walkie talkie. Right. Uh, but maybe it's maybe it's text and voice and you can always hop into a, a voice chat room if you want. And, you know, you can know where other people are. Like maybe it is more of a full service kind of communicator as opposed to just a walkie talkie. If it was a thing that was free and somehow traveled on air, I think that the, you, you're 100 percent right about your prediction. But I think, in light of the fact that everybody's got a piece of smart hardware in their pocket now, what you're describing is an app. And, yes. And it'll just be a private app. Well, and but, uh, but but think of it not like, think of it as as the extension of the app, right? Or or like or where we're going, right? Because first it was just like, oh well, we have a phone. A phone does it. The internet does it. And then it's like, oh no, no, wait. There's some things that are better if they're their own little walled off thing mm -hmm. and those are apps yeah, right yeah and what if it's cheaper and and you know it's not that expensive to buy and it either runs with communication that's already there or it connects to your phone for a communication source and there's just a, another what if your app became physical i guess that that's what i'm thinking of what if there was a physical little doodad that gave you an element of that the, what you loved about that app experience but something else because it was fully walled off from your phone as opposed to just 
uh, walled off via software. I, like the Twitter peak. Yeah. That, was that a thing? Yeah, 2009. It was a device that only did Twitter. Oh, weird. A, a, like, a, at a point where Twitter was minuscule compared to where it is now, yeah. you know? And, and, and it's not to say that there's that there will be plenty of people that are first through the door when this will be really, really dumb. And, and <laughs> maybe it'll be... Maybe it would be cool at some point. I don't know. Yeah. I guess I, I just don't find it inconceivable. I don't think it. I don't think it necessarily will happen, but I could see it happen. Tom like, Merritt, so it's a novelty. Tom Merritt, the tech lord, you must weigh in on this idea. I I really want to applaud and encourage Justin's uh, ability to turn this into a real tech segment. This is just for Star Trek fans. <laughs> yes, <Yeah. correct. laughs> Always bringing us around. I love it. It's such a specific. Uh, <laughs> Such a specific uh, novelty to like a niche group of people that it's not. I, I don't. I don't. I think one hundred fifty dollars is a little bit excessive. Sure, but you're gonna you're gonna find Trek people who are just oh gonna yeah eat this. Oh, oh yeah, man. it'll be on eBay for fifteen thousand bucks. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not kidding. Justin just brought up a really interesting point and a really interesting discussion and a way of thinking, and it made me think of the Twitter peak and how it was too early, but maybe you know all of that. But but yeah, that's not this 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 is really just like hey. Comic Con, want to pre-order a communicator? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, we forecasted that business. That's what we did. Yeah, yeah. By the way, uh, Captain Kipper notes Marvel announced Elodie Young. You might remember her as Jinx from the GI Joe movie. Has been cast as Elektra for season two of Daredevil. And if you remember, Elektra is a female ninja assassin of Greek descent. Elodie herself is a French Cambodian and knows karate. All right. So, so I don't know. I I got this. I got this burning question. Justin, I'll ask you first. Yeah. Are we going to have extemporaneous character slash villain bloat on season two? The thing that happens to all superhero movies, too many villains. You start with one for your first one, goes pretty well. You might have two the next one. By the time you're around to your third, you got three to four to five villains playing in the same sandbox. Do you think that we're, I'm starting to feel, I'm starting to be a little worried that there's a little bit of extra character that need their own space bloat for Daredevil season two? Um, I, I think it's less of a concern in a television show than it is a movie because you just know that there's less real estate in a movie for it to be like, oh, God, wait, really? We're going to go through Venom and uh, New Green Goblin and Sandman uh, yeah. and maybe a little wink to Carnage <laughs> like in the same movie? Really? We're going to do that? Yeah. Uh, like, Whereas in, in Daredevil, it's like, listen, they got a lot of episodes. They got, what, uh, 10 episodes, 11 episodes, 12 episodes? Something like that, yeah. I think it's uh, something like 12, yeah. yeah. So it's like, you know, it, I, I don't think that it's necessarily the worst thing uh, uh, in the world. Also, because uh, Elektra and, and Punisher specifically, which are the two that, were, that are announced, you've got plenty of room to find out how they're going to play them. You mm -hmm. know, that they keep talking about the Punisher as being the bad guy in this season. I'll be very surprised if it ends the season with him being the bad guy. You have the Kingpin kind of uh, in, in the background, sort of, uh, you know, probably still a part of things. And uh, and then, you know, Elektra is your love interest, you know, in a in a in a dangerous, sexy way, the likes of which is her at her peak in the Daredevil mythos so yeah, yeah well you're adding to her you got the punisher will be in this season you'll have uh i forgot them all but then i think about this season and you know you had stick and you had uh other people <laughs> so so i guess it's fine joey thoughts what are you thinking about season two i haven't seen season one oh. I'm, sorry. I'm sorry to say I, I i've heard all the hype and i, I it's, it's on my to-do list i just haven't gotten around to it i think you really like it it was um Big surprise, I thought, how well that thing turned out. So, Hey, by the way. I can say I was not a fan of the Ben Affleck movie, though. Oh, well, good. You're, you're in safe territory <laughs> here. You'll be fine. Yes, can, can, we, can we take a look at um, at at the the cast of the original G.I. Joe movie real quick? Sure. Yeah. I've, Christopher yeah. Eccleston as Destro. <laughs> yeah. Joseph Gordon-Levitt as the Doctor slash oh, Rex. Yeah. You're talking about the uh, live action movie, not yeah. the actual live action original G.I. Joe movie. Where this, where, uh, uh, where <laughs> this is, is coming from. I like how uh, Joey just big manned you on G.I. Joe movies. Uh, and I like that yeah. he threw in the real one. Like I, want, I still watch it at least once a month. Jeez Louise, dude. But that's, wait, no, we got Levitt, sweet. Eccleston, now Elodie Young. Who else? Uh, Dennis Quaid, Channing Tatum. Uh, and uh, that's where it kind of. That's falls before out. Tatum got his big, uh, his huge. I don't break. think they could have budget for those people anymore. 
You pick it no, out. Yeah, if you were to recast the original G.I. Joe movie, you would have a hard time uh, fitting it under the budget. Yeah. Had Mar- Marlon Wayans, Arnold Vosloo. I know I'm dragging the barrel now, but still. Yeah. Uh, I mean, because yeah, then you got people that are definitely just in all those movies like Ray Park and uh, yeah. Sienna Miller. Remember when everybody was trying to make Sienna Miller happen? Yeah, that was a deal for a while. I remember that. She's still making stuff. It's fine. She's fine. She's yeah, fine. fine. Anyway, Sorry. good job, Electra. We're happy to have you there, and uh, may you may you Beyond ever reign. Beyond the new, Elodie Young. Yeah. Uh, and we know that most of you listening to this later or watching this later uh, will have already heard all the Star Wars announcements from the Comic-Con panel, but we haven't yet, so we're still excited about what EFC 88 brought to us, which is that Lego movie directors Christopher Miller and Phil Lord will direct a Star Wars anthology movie about a young Han Solo set to release May 25th, 2018. It'll be written... By Lawrence and John Kasdan. Lawrence Kasdan, of course, wrote Empire Strikes Back. John Kasdan of Dawson's Creek. It will tell the story about how Han Solo became a smuggler, a thief, and a scoundrel. And I'm going to guess that it's probably Dawson's fault that everything is not (laughs) awesome for Han. I love the fact... I love the fact that someone named Lord is directing a Star Wars movie. I just love it. Yeah. I'll tell you what's cool, or what's something that... Well, yeah, so Ibit has this concern. The other day mentioned it's worth bringing up here. He said... Really hope that they don't do like the third Indiana Jones movie where when he's a kid, they make all the references that shape his adult life. Like, I'm afraid of snakes. Here's a bunch of snakes. Oop, this is how I got hit with the whip and got this scar on my chin. Like all of these like origin things happen. Uh, there's some concern that a, that a movie about a young Han Solo would be too uh, fan servicey. Like he'd spend a lot of time making references like his his mom would I'm send him out i'm just imagining as much money as i can right now <laughs> but i could see like his mom's like all right son have a good day on the millennium falcon i love yeah. you and he'd turn I around and go i know shoot somebody at a bar <laughs> <laughs> young han is played by shia labeouf right <laughs> yeah hopefully not uh we don't know that part though right no casting no this is no all, we don't know no. any casting as far as if I know. if you are going to put your faith uh, from an established franchise in the hands of two guys, though, uh, uh, you know, Miller and Lord are kind of the guys right now, right? Sure. I mean, they made not one, but two amazingly hilarious 21 Jump Street movies, which might have been impossible. And by the way, have like just set the attack of the clones of now every movie has to have the scene where it's like, hey, we're a ripoff and we're just trying to steal your money by taking advantage of your childhood. Wink, like scene, because 21 Jump Street did it so well. Yeah, uh, They did the Lego movie, which is amazing. They've done my favorite cartoon ever, which is Clone High. Uh, I-, I am fully in the tank for Miller and Lord. Uh, the question is, who's Han Solo? Yep, yep, that we is. May, that's the question. Tom, right? won't we know later today, possibly? Because the panel... I don't, won't I don't know if people out there listening already know possibly they could know no idea they could know. i, I what? doubt i if it's not out right now i think that you're right i think they would have made the announcements all at the same time huh no or it would have been leaked it would have been leaked yeah yeah i'm looking uh, that uh, that we, we will get a short list of who they are considering for young han solo before we see who young young han solo is but immediately who would you like to see names, what was that who would you like to see well, two names come up immediately, which is the leading men for which they have worked with uh, previously, Chris Pratt and Channing Tatum. Okay. I, I, I don't think that Too Chris old. Pratt we, can do it. Do we know how young they're going, by the way? I'm sorry to cut you off. We don't do you know, know. We know how young they're going? No. We don't. Okay. Could be anything. Could be, my name's Han. What's your name? <laughs> yeah, right. That's what I mean. Yeah, it could be him Han meeting and Chewie. Buddy Greedo. Yeah, it could be it could be when he's a kid. It could be some of that, and then when he's older. My guess is it's when he's a smuggler and he's learning the trade and being a Indiana scoundrel. Solo. Yeah, because that's what all the stuff we're seeing says. It's like find out how he became such a scoundrel, and I I'm hoping that isn't junior high. You know? I'm I'm going to take a guess that it'll be Zach. You know, if they want to play within the universe, maybe <laughs> it, it's Efron. as he gets the Millennium Falcon, how he falls into trouble with Jabba, like like that kind of stuff. How about he's probably too old now, but but I wouldn't I wouldn't say no to Tom Hardy in there. <laughs> well, that's this, just because Tom Hardy does everything, and he makes me warm inside. I really like him. I like that guy. Uh, that's that's a personal problem. <laughs> you should probably see a doctor. Yeah, There's uh, a subreddit for that. Don't worry. It's fine. Uh, yeah. But, all right. So, but, but we we agree that y- you can't have Pratt do Star Lord and Han Solo because Chris Pratt doing Han know. Solo, like would just it would be too much like Star Lord, right? 
kind of. Star Lord's very much Han Solo. I'm kind of with but Jerry on this. It would make both of them lamer. It would make the Han Solo movie lamer. It would make. It would be like having Harrison Ford be Han Solo and Indiana Jones. <laughs> no, 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 no. Absolutely not. <laughs> Because I would say Chris Pratt can do the because they're looking at recasting Indiana Jones. I wouldn't mind him being Indiana Jones. Yeah, he'd fit. He'd fit in there. They are different characters. I get that. I get that. All right. Well, just one's in space and one's in the jungle. Like, I mean, like, <laughs> even if, if just that, like. Yeah. Just consolidate. Put him in a space jungle. Done. Uh, all right. That's your news. Thanks for participating in the new segment of the show. That means we are leading straight into this big fun, which is this. America scores and wins. Okay, that music means only one thing, and that means this. We have a moment to spend with our guests uh, quiz form-like. None of that made sense. We're going to ask them questions from this quiz I have. And, uh, whoop, music died. There it is. Uh, the quizzes are in areas of their expertise. They try to answer them the best they can. They're kind of competing against each other and sort of the long haul of the show. Tom keeps score. You guys ready? This is going to show how much jury knows about wrestling. How much more jury knows about wrestling than I do. Well, here Listen, I'm just going to say the last time I was wearing this shirt, I was in uh, Music, Pennsylvania, watching Joey Image uh, wrestle his last match, and it will be my pleasure wearing this same shirt again to retire his ass from podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Coincidentally, the last time I was in Music, Pennsylvania, I was wearing this shirt. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> what you just said Good. while you were watching me while wearing that shirt. Joey, if you get it right, you'll hear yes. this. It, whoops. Where is it? Sorry. That. If you get it wrong, you'll hear this. Here's your uh, here's your questions. It is wrestling trivia for Joey today. Justin's going to be surprised what his is. Uh, here it starts with this question. Brock Lesnar likes to take... Sorry. Likes to take people to what city? Suplex. You are... Correct. I don't know why that's not playing the way it's supposed to. All right, I swarm. Come on. You're just. You're yeah, I know. <laughs> it was an easy one. I was like, oh, Baltimore. I mean, come on. <laughs> that right. was Here's this one. In WCW, which which NWO member did Diamond Dallas Page feud with for the most or with the most in 1997? Uh, you gotta be kidding me. This is all before his breakout At yoga 97, life. Um, it wasn't Buff Bagwell. It Buff was. Bagwell, that's my answer. Uh, Buff Bagwell, is that you said? Yes. It is not. It is Ooh, Macho. Yeah. yeah, Randy Man. Randy uh, Man. Randy Man. <laughs> Mach, <laughs> macho Randy Man, Man Randy Savage. The Randy Man can. <laughs> that was a different character. Uh, all right. At what, uh, at what pay-per-view in 1996 did Stone Cold coin his iconic Austin 316 slogan? King of the Ring. You are correct. Nicely done. I, I, I almost said it as if I would have known that otherwise. I have no idea. Yeah. Who did Ric Flair defeat in 1983 to win his first NWA World Heavyweight Championship? Harley Race. You are incorrect. The American Dream, Dusty Rhodes. Dusty Rhodes. Son uh, of a baboon. Daddy. Uh, <laughs> who sold out Omni in Atlanta? <laughs> if you will. There you go. Who are the? Uh, sorry. Who are the three alter egos of Mick Foley? Oh, stop it, Ice War. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know, my three favorite wrestlers, maybe? Or my one favorite wrestler, at least, okay. uh, Cact which is Cactus Jack. Okay. The other two being Mankind. The third being Dude Love. And for extra credit, he actually wrestled as Mick Foley as well. Whoa, nicely Ooh, done. Half point extra credit bonus. I was going to say, Tom was going to give you some points there. <laughs> nicely done. I always just knew him as Mankind, so I didn't know any of that other stuff. Here's your uh, third to last question. Who did Shawn Michaels throw through a glass window? A very good friend of mine, Marty Jannetty. You are correct. Well, that seems like an easy answer then, if he's a friend of yours. Because that comes up, right, at a bar. Hey, remember that time I got thrown through the <laughs> thing? time. Yeah, I can see that. All right, uh, second to last question. Lita is one of the greatest female wrestlers of all time. Who did she manage when she made herself, or made her uh, WWF slash WWE debut? And you have to get the right name. First of all, I disagree, and it was it began as Poppy Chulo and morphed into S.A. <laughs> Rios. All right, you got it. And that may be extra credit, Tom, I don't know. Yeah, that's another half point extra right. credit. Nicely done. Not morphed, they just changed his name. I don't yeah. know why it said morphed. They Fine. didn't change the gimmick or the character. All right. Just the name, yeah. which made no sense. Same. He was still Poppy Chulo. Yeah, it didn't make any sense, though. <laughs> Final question. What was Triple H's ring name when he wrestled in the WCW? Uh, well, this is a trick question because he had more than one. Oh. He was. He came in as Terra Rising. Uh, his second name was Jean, Jean Paul Levesque, which is Paul Levesque is his real name. All right. The, Jean, the Gene or J E N. You're part correct was, on the Terra. Point extra credit. Yeah, the Terra Rising is the accurate one or, or the one he wrote here, and then you've got more extra credit. Jeez, you're kind of killing it, dude. 
Uh, those are your questions. Hold tight because I Justin's... I knew Dusty Rhodes, too. I knew that answer. Dust, Justin's going to jump into an area that lately he's had a lot of experience in. And that's politics. Oh, All right. yeah. All the questions are about Carly Fiorina's campaign for president. These are right along the stuff you're doing, dude. So here you go. You got this. All right, let's go. All right. What presidential candidate was heavily criticized when he was photo uh, photographed riding an M1 Abrams tank? Uh, that would be Michael Dukakis. You are correct. I knew you were going to get these. This is great. What year was Jesse Ventura elected as the governor of Minnesota? Ninety-seven. Well, cross over there. Huh? Ninety-seven. You say? Yeah. Ninety-eight. So close. God damn. Right, so point nine. He gets point nine. So close. What city in Alaska was Sarah Palin elected mayor of in 1996? Wasilla, don't you know? <laughs> she can see Russia from there. Uh, who was Bob Dole's running mate during the 1996 elections? Uh, Jack Kemp. You're kind of killing it. Roll hemp. I'm always impressed by this sort of thing. I don't know why. But I am because Justin, in so many other ways, is all the other things we love him for. But then you find it—you just lift up a little piece of skin and you see this wearer, slobbering, barking dog. I love it. Easily distracted. I freaking love excited. it. Excited. I really like it. All right, next up, who was Bob Dole? I already did that. Uh, what snack item did George W. Bush choke on while in office? That would be a pretzel. You are correct. Almost killed him. Uh. He know. was watching uh, football on a Sunday afternoon. That's a big shock. What two, what two? Oh, hey, really? All right. Oh, that doesn't count. <laughs> what 2004 Democratic candidate went on a tear by standing where, uh, sorry, where they were going to go to a bunch of states and ended up with a weird yell that backfired on him and probably cost him the primary? Uh, that would be uh, the man who was uh, not only stopping in New Hampshire, but on to South Carolina, <laughs> on to Florida, on to Washington, D.C., and then the White House. Yeah! 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 That's him. I have, the, I have the current head of the Democratic National Committee. Nice. You got it. Oh, you got it right. Did it you is. ever say his name? Oh, yeah. Did Howard you? Dean. Oh, Howard Dean. Yeah, you did. Uh, Paula Dean. Placing Terry McAuliffe as the head of the Democratic National Committee. Yes, Paula Dean. And if y'all will excuse me. All right. <laughs> Uh, President Obama appeared Which on the... He had some explaining to do this week, didn't she? <laughs> she sure did, didn't she? Oh, my gosh. Uh, again. <laughs> or as she wrote, explaining. But anyway, uh, President Obama appeared on the cover of 2009's issue of Marvel Comics. What comic was it that he appeared on? And do you know the number? Uh, he has the number here. I don't know if we have to give it to him. Tom can decide. Oh, but... no, I, I don't know the number, but he was on the uh, Spider-Man the Spider comic. I'm going to say... I'm going to give you that one unless Tom disagrees. No, he, he would have gotten extra points for the for the number. All right. The Amazing Spider-Man 530 or 583 is the correct number. Yeah. Final question. What Which Beach Boys song did John McCain use in a joke that got him in a bit of trouble? Uh, that would be Barbara Ann, which he said uh, as bomb, 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 Iran. Good Lord. You nailed it. <laughs> wow. That's impressive to me. Keep your you eye know, on I just, Kickstarter. I just got to get tuned up for Nerd Tacky, you know, <laughs> because, uh, you know, this is the, it's just people have come to expect, you know, a, a dominating Brock Lesnar like performance out of me at, at, at Nerd Tacular. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I just, I, I got to get everybody ready to let every, you know, let people know that I'm just going to mow down the competition. It's going to be exciting business, that. Hopefully, there's some political questions. Tom, how'd they do? Uh, there are eight questions that each of them answered. And, very strangely, Justin Robert Young got 8.4 out of 8, correct? Yeah. And Joey Image got 8.5 to be oh, come on. That's bull. That's, that's absolute. <laughs> that's bull. That's like, come on. <laughs> that's that's unassailable. Tight. This has been verified externally. Jeez, ah, so, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> That was awesome. All right. I expect a handshake at Nerd Tech. Absolutely. Oh, stop it. All right. Nice thing you done, guys. You did good. Uh, now we have this. The future promises even more startling things to come. It used to be a show. Now it's a segment. It's called Forecast. It's where we get to predict the future. And Joey put one in here. Uh, about. Yeah, I don't know where this came from, by the way. This just popped in my head a couple I, of weeks ago. I like ago. it. Give me what you got here. What do you got? Well, uh... <laughs> I actually had to go and correct it because I initially put uh, 
something like 3207 or something. But uh, I will predict that by the year 2027, that law enforcement will begin send. I'm, I'm reading this because I don't remember word for word, but right. law enforcement will begin sending disguised android prostitutes to gentlemen callers <laughs> in an attempt to catch them red-handed and have them arrested, as they normally would be. But the the big thing is they're using androids because once these guys find out that they're robots, they don't want to uh, get beaten up. Right, because the robot as could... If they used, you know, actual women, you know. The robot the could hurt them. This is interesting. What did you... What did this? What was this based on? How come this popped into your head, do you think? <laughs> I, I was thinking about hooker your, robot sex. Your, your, really your, so, your uh, subreddit was shut down for a couple days, and you were like... The hooker robot subreddit was down. <laughs> Well, I mean, Our okay. Hooker robots. We always, we always on forecast. One of the things we do think about is like stuff that you know. W- what would technology? What impact would it have on everyday things? And I suppose an everyday thing is busting Johns when they're picking up, picking up. My hookers. only question, Joey, is: Can you get this to hold up in court if it's an Android? Not a, like, like, is that illegal? Is it? Can you bust them for the solicitation if it's not actually a human being? Is that entrapment? What, I mean, whoa. Well, no, there would uh, there would be recording devices, obviously, in the eyeballs or whatever, cameras or whatever, but it would have to be admissible. You know, there would have to be some kind of laws based on their findings, I guess. Yeah. All right. Uh, are, are you guys ready? Cause Lay it on us. Here's where this conversation gets real. Go ahead, loser. Buckle you lost. Up. Buckle up. Enough out of you. All right. <laughs> Me buckle up. Wait a minute. Yeah. No, I mean, listen. I, I know. You, I know. You, you, you felt kicked out. In your old age, now that you're retired. <laughs> You know, like, but you don't, don't need your sass here in the podcasting world, okay? Yeah. All right. Uh, hey, you're my tag team partner, come to Tackler, so I have to be good to you. <laughs> All right. So this is a really, really great idea, and I think where it is most applicable is on two levels. One is weirder and grosser than 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 the other, and I'll start with the easiest one. All right. Number one, you would the the benefit of having these robots would be if they are passing the Turing test to Johns enough that they would want to have sex with them, you would basically be going to the point like up to as close of the act as possible. So you were not relying on them just saying to the officer as we do now, like, yes, I would like to pay for this. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. you would you'd be able to get as much evidence as possible uh, up to the act because it's a robot and theoretically we don't have to think about their feelings. More than that, you would want to use these robots in places where we can't, in good conscience, put humans. Right. Like, right. Like a, like some kind of crack house or some kind of wherever they go, wherever they take them. No, I would say, I mean, like for youth at risk situations. Oh, right, know, right, where, right. Yeah, where yeah. You are, are catching really the, the most vile elements of society. Uh, where you, you, at, 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 in law enforcement now, you have to, you know, put somebody who looks young in, in that situation. But you could have somebody, you could build a robot that looked. But then eight. the John's going to say, but it was just a robot. It's like, oh, no, I, 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 I'm not I, was a I knew it was a robot the whole time. I was just playing along. Uh, well. You know, it's, it's an interesting point. Otherwise. It's an interesting point. Also, right now you, Tom, you have proven yourself to be the better call Saul of, of uh, <laughs> robot hooker uh, busted people. Tom got busted a... with a robot hooker. Better call me. Yeah, Tom, add that to your NaNoWriMo list for. No, uh, I think Joey nailed it earlier, actually, which is you have to re- write the law to say, you know, whether it's a robot or not. Your intent to do this. Right. The, yeah, the intent was there, and here's yeah. the the film that shows. Yeah, but okay, hold on now though. If it's so if the robots are so realistic that they that the Johns are none the wiser until the gig is up, uh then we start treading into that weird territory of these robots are awful lifelike. When yeah, is it when is it life rights. and when isn't it? Yeah. So Or maybe I, they don't maybe the Johns don't know until they get to court and they're like, you know well, those that blue because, eyes on that chick? Because yeah. if the robots don't have rights wouldn't somebody just buy a bunch of these and create a legal place for people to get like, hey, these are robots. Come on in. Oh, yeah. well, so that's robots? the question, right? Robot what, hookers are never likely, tired. Yeah. What's more likely in 2027 for us to have touring test passing robots that can catch Johns or have legal robots that people can just pay to have sex with uh, and we have a, a different evolved notion of what prostitution is. The latter. You're, yeah. uh, the latter yeah. is probably more likely. Yeah. Yeah. 
and and I and I'm well. Let's wait and see if it comes to fruition. But I'm less. Like, you, you can start a whole. I mean, I could start a whole robo whore business. And <laughs> my tagline would just be robo whore. She's never. You know, she never says no. She never has a headache. Wow. Or something like that. You know, it's She's really never st- against the law. It's just a just a perfect deal for you there, Joey. Go for it. <laughs> Um, but you know, yeah, I mean, I, I guess, I guess that's all, then that opens up all those ethical questions of like, well, you know, they're robots. So now it's everyone's safe, but then I don't know, is it, it's still weird. Like these guys that want a young robot and it's just still weird, you know, I don't know, man. I, I will, I will say that, uh, the idea I just mentioned is better than my, a prior idea I had, which was human hookers, but on rollerblades, and that was called Rollaho. Oh, I see at what least, you got. At least these ones never have a headache that I've ever seen. I'm no, not really surprised. Future, uh, <laughs> that doesn't make the situation. Well, no, that, no, no, that was, uh, I had that idea years ago. Yeah, no one will be offended by any of this. That already exists somewhere. I can almost guarantee it. Yeah. <laughs> as long as it's not called Rollaho, I'm fine. If it is, then I want royalties. <laughs> it was your idea first, damn it. Yes. Uh, we got an email from a listener. We always like to have a little bit of feedback. Brandy Nikki wrote in, says, Hey, guys, love the show. Here's my forecasting idea. In the future, we will be able to record slash stream our dreams onto websites like YouTube. This will be an accompli- or this will be accomplished through some sort of patch or implant applied behind the ear, and we will have uh, connectivity to external devices like Bluetooth. On these dreams websites, you'll be able to upload your dreams and watch other people's dreams. There will be categories like apocalyptic, strange, triple X, horror, funny, uh, and you will be able to tag your dreams with keywords like spiders so people can search for it. Uh, research will be conducted to see if trends and dream types correlate to real world events. That's all I've got for now. Hope you enjoy it and hope it comes true, says Brandy. Uh, wow. Brandy. Go see Strange Days. Yeah, that was the one. Haven't already. Strange Days is pretty good. Brain what was the other one? Um, br- uh, Brainstorm is another uh, very similar idea. Uh, also, the first thing that came to my mind when I was reading this was, this dream is unavailable due to a rights claim by Disney. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hold on a minute. Was no, no, you're right. Bra- uh, Strange Days was the trading of dreams, wasn't it? Yeah. It yes. was like a drug, and people got like, addicted uh, to yeah, it. Yeah, they had that little gimmick that popped in their head and. And it looked I like a. They were, some, so they were live experiences, not necessarily. Yes. Games. And they right. looked like Sony mini discs, right? Yes, exactly. Oh, <laughs> yeah, they were. That movie. They dude. were actually, yeah, I think. Catherine right. Bigelow before uh, before she got, I don't know, got serious. Small I suppose. <laughs> Uh, if you would like to send in your own email, your own comments, your own thoughts, send them to currentgeek at gmail.com or you can call us, leave us a voicemail, 801 471 And that marks the end of another fine podcast. Uh, before we go, though, we'd like to always give our guests a chance to talk about cool projects and things they have going on. Let's start with Justin. Justin, what's going on? Yo, uh, we got a big thing coming up. It's called The Contender. It's a card game. It'll be uh, out on Kickstarter, either the week before or the week after, Nerdtacular. Uh, either way, we're shooting that Kickstarter video tomorrow, and uh, we are looking for more and more people to uh, to go ahead and and, uh, and and get involved. So follow the Contender on uh, on Twitter. Contender Game, also, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, it, 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 yeah. It's at Contender Game. Mm-hmm. Contender Game on Instagram. Contender Game on Facebook. Follow, follow, follow each and every one of them, and. If you'd like a print and play deck, uh, we're, we have our hundred card beta print and play deck. Uh, the 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 final base deck will be over three hundred cards. Uh, but for and that's really the, the the best thing that we've gotten is a lot of feedback saying uh, this is great. More cards. Don't worry, there will be more cards, and yeah. they will be there for you uh, when we do the Kickstarter. So if you'd like to try the uh, the, the beta deck, hit us up on Twitter at Contender Game. Uh, otherwise, you will. Hear me flogging the ever-loving crap out of this over the next month and a half. Having seen the the beta deck and messed with it a bit and seen kind of behind the scenes a little bit, I could not be more excited. And the, the political acumen that Justin displayed today on the show is just kind of a taste of that sort of stuff. So you guys are going to love it. It's going to be great. I can't wait. Uh, Joey, what the hell's going on with you, man? Anything you want to tell people? Somewhere to go? <laughs> uh, a lot of people <laughs> like to tell where to go. Uh, <laughs> um. Yes, I guess my new T-shirt store. Well, not that it's new anymore, but it's been open since uh, mid-June. ProWrestlingTees.com/slash Joey Image. And <laughs> contrary to the, uh, the joke email I got this afternoon, it is not spelled T-E-A-S-E and me and Skimpy Clothing. It is in fact T-E-S, like tees. Yeah. <laughs> oh, like tees, like T-shirt. Got it. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. Somebody emailed me and was like, it should be pro wrestling, like T-E-A-S-E, and you're like in a dress. I'm like, oh, it's not my gimmick there, but thank you for the suggestion. Cool. Uh, yeah, that's that's the big thing right now, and uh, it would really help if people went on there and bought shirts because I just lost my day job recently, so that's my only income right now. Well, go check it out. Um, Joey, Joey Image on Twitter, right? Yes, sir, at Joey Image on Twitter, Facebook.com slash Real Joey Image, and... Pretty soon, there's going to be. Uh, I'm just going to buy thatimageguy.com because I I have hashtag thatimageguy on all formats of social media. So I'm tired of giving out 25 different links every time. It's just one thing. So eventually, look for that. But for now, the T-shirt store and the Twitter are the biggest things for me. Cool, man. It was great having you here. Thanks for being on. Thank you, sirs. Uh, Tom, you got anything before we go? There's only one way to follow the greatest sports league in existence. That's FSLtonight.com, hosted by myself and Justin Robert Young. This week, the yeah. Giant Mountain Gators have an amazing pickup. There's a barn burner going right now between the Coruscant Centers and the Los Angeles Guardians of the Galaxy. you got to tune in if you want to find out how it all turns out. FSLtonight.com. Yep. Hey, can I plug one more thing? I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. My YouTube. Uh, I forgot all about that. I've been doing a ton of tech videos lately. Uh, YouTube.com, I guess slash user slash Joey image something like that i don't know just hit up my twitter you'll see it on there uh i've been doing a lot of tech videos a lot of unboxings reviews um a lot of monthly subscription box unboxings so check it out there's a bunch of companies i've been doing product testing for the last couple of months so all that stuff is on there and go check it out thank you all three of us can be found at nerdtacular uh this year we'll all be there coming up in a couple of weeks uh holy crap i can't believe how fast it's coming i have tons to do but i'm excited to see all my all friends there us. Yeah, all what I say, all three. Yeah, all four, all four of us, or men, all three of you and me. I wasn't counting me. <laughs> so if you want to get slapped in the chest by Joey, or pull on Justin's beard, or tug on Tom, Tom's uh, cape, cape, <laughs> they'll all be there for the tugging. Uh, thanks. You can't ride on my cape. <laughs> no, you can't. You can't spit into the wind. But uh, really glad everybody <laughs> was here. Thank you so much. Currentgeek.com is the website. Currentgeek.reddit.com uh, on Reddit, where all that craziness is. And uh, we'll be back next week with a brand new show. Thank you all for being here. We'll see you next time. Yes. Well done, everyone. Ah, so much Woo! fun. You guys are awesome. Yeah, yeah, you guys are great. Thank you, sir. As always. Uh, nice unboxing videos, Joe. I didn't know you were doing those. I got to check those out. Yeah, I'm doing... Uh like the monthly subscription stuff, but uh, I don't know if you know who Satachi is. Um, them, uh, um, New Trent is another one. There's another company called Newt. There's one called Case something or other. I don't remember who they are. I just started with them. But they're all sending me free stuff for reviews. I'm doing YouTube videos as well as Amazon reviews. So it's cool. I'm getting like five or six free things a week, and they're all stuff I use. So That's, That's cool. great. Yeah. Yeah. What's wrong with that? YouTube.com slash Joey Image. There are perks. I guess. Yeah, I don't know what the That's URLs are for it. that. Okay, cool. Well, that works. <laughs> All right. Well, y'all have the best weekend you can have, and we'll all talk soon. Goodbye. See you Bye. later. Bye, everybody. Thank you for being here. See you next time. Bye.